want to welcome everyone here this evening and our viewing audience. Again, on behalf of, behalf of the League of Women Voters, my name is Barbara Klein, and I would like to introduce our leaguers helping with this event. We have Barbara Robertson, Jean Darnell, and Rivko Knox, who are question screeners and will collect and sort questions. Also with us from the League are Dana Johnson and Alice Stambaugh, who will keep us on track regarding time. The League of Women Voters is a grassroots organization of women and men and believes in building better government through citizen education and advocacy. While we are decidedly political and that we advocate for or against issues that we have studied, we never support or oppose a party or a candidate. We can be found at www.lwb.org. We have a few announcements. Candidates were invited to put written literature on the campaign tables that are located at the back of the room. Um, and they will have candidate background information and sponsor information as well. There should be no campaign literature passed out along the um, audience. Restrooms are located in the back of the room, so if you need to use those, please try to do so quietly. Or if you leave the room, please try to do it quietly. Volunteers handed out index cards and pencils to individuals who wish to submit a question for the candidate. We are collecting these questions now and throughout the forum, so if you have one later, <coughs> simply hold your card up and a volunteer will collect it. We ask that your cell phones are turned off as a matter of courtesy to your neighbors and the candidates. Additionally, you should realize that unauthorized videotaping still falls under the rules of the FCC, which requires that a debate must not be edited and must be broadcast in its entirety, either live or reasonably soon after it takes place. Um, I want to mention that there will be times of this forum being rebroadcast, and they can be found on the Channel 11 website at www.glendaleaz.com slash Glendale 11 and listed under TV Guide or click on TV Guide. Now, let me take a moment to explain tonight's format. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening and two minutes for a closing. The order for both statements was determined by a hat drawing. For most questions, the candidates will be given 90 seconds for response and 60 seconds for rebuttal. We do, however, ask them to be aware that the longer each question takes, the fewer we will be allowed to ask. Clearly, some questions can be answered with a short sentence or two. And while we all cherish brevity, we ask that the candidates try to respond to each question as completely as possible to best actually answer the concerns of the voters. All questions will be asked through the moderator and are screened by the League primarily to avoid duplicate questions, ones that are not relevant, and those that are profane or inappropriate. Please realize we will not get to everyone's question, but we will do our best to get a fair representation of all the topics. All questions and statements will be staggered amongst the candidates. You are all here tonight to learn where these two candidates stand on the issues that affect your city. Applause, cheering, or outbursts only shorten the amount of time we have, and we have a very short time tonight, so please refrain from doing either. Information is important, but we also demand civility. Please remember this. I appreciate your cooperation, and so do all those around you. We don't have our cattle prods tonight with us, but uh, we do plan to prod everyone in the direction of civility nevertheless. On behalf of the candidates, we sincerely appreciate your attendance tonight. And on behalf of the voters, we thank the candidates for their participation and willingness to serve this city and serve in civi civic duty. Now I would like to introduce the mayoral candidates. Manuel or Manny Cruz is on my right and Jerry Wires on my left. Now our first opening statement comes from Mr. Wires. And thank you very much. I'd like to thank uh, the League of Women Voters, uh, also the American Legion. I hope this is not too loud for you. Um, when I was 26 years old, I was diagnosed with cancer, and that's pretty shocking news for a newlywed couple. 
I'm, I'm telling you that uh, this personal story, not because I'm looking for sympathy, but to show you that I have overcome some personal challenges. I found out during chemotherapy that my wife, which is sitting in the back room right now, was pregnant with our first and our only child, which uh, ended up being a girl. Our daughter is now pregnant with her first child, which will be my first grandchild. And I point this out to you to show you how we've overcome personal challenges and we were able to get to a better place. Both in my personal business, in the state house, I have overcome big challenges. I've helped a $3 billion deficit and turned that into an $800 million surplus. I can and I will do the same thing for the type, these types of things for the city of Glendale. I believe in this city and I know that this dream is possible. Glendale does have a great future that you can believe in and I'm looking for your support. Thank you. Here we go. I would like to thank the League of Women Voters and the Glendale Tea Party Patriots as well as the American Legion for hosting tonight's debate. And thanks to everyone here and watching at home. My name is Manny Cruz and I'm running for mayor of Glendale because I truly care about our communities and our city. And because as I've stated before, as well as the Arizona Republic when they endorsed my campaign, Glendale's at a crossroad and we need a strong leader with clear focus that'll move us past our current issues and stabilize our city so that we can move it forward. Now, it's about 20 days until the election. And my opponent um, has uh, resorted to partisan games, putting up signs, uh, childish signs that say tax hiker and cruise control in an attempt to distract you from the fact that he has no plan. The issues that face Glendale are not a partisan issues. That's why I've, that's why I put a focus on my six point economic plan that involves our citizens, our community. It fosters accountability and transparency. It cuts inefficiencies and saves the city millions. And it puts Glendale at the forefront of economic uh, economic development. My plan brings in new jobs, it strengthens our schools and our neighborhoods so that we can stabilize our city and move Glendale forward. You've got a, a very difficult decision to make on who you're going to vote for. And I ask for your vote in supporting me to be your next mayor of Glendale. Thank you so much. Thank you, and keep your mic on because the first question goes to you. <clears throat> We've had this stated in, in several different ways from, from different people, but basically um, it is about the casino and, and the resort, and they would like to know your position on it, why you have that position, and please be specific if you can. Absolutely, great question. Um, I support the West Valley Resort and Casino because it's going to bring in thousands of jobs at a time where we desperately need them. It's going to bring money to the city of Glendale as well as the city of Peoria. It's going to indirectly bring in more jobs with uh, the amount of sales of, of products and services that they, that they will have ongoing. Um, they'll use community, they'll, they'll use local labor and local businesses first they'll fund the after school programs. Um, they won't cost the city a dime. We will go into intergovernmental agreements with them on police and fire um, and, and other issues so that the city of Glendale does not have to pay a dime. And that's a guarantee that they made. Um, it's something that I would see in writing, but at a time when we are in this financial crisis, we need the jobs, we need the revenue. It'll bring folks to Westgate, additional folks to Westgate, along with the Tanger Outlet and along with uh, Dignity Health Hospital that should be breaking ground in January. So all that, all that adds up to a, a better fiscal year for the city of Glendale. Thank you, Mr. Myers. 
Uh, it's, uh, it's no surprise to anybody that I have been an opponent of the TO Nation uh, as far as opening up, not the TO Nation, but as far as opening up the casino. And it's not for what a lot of people seem to, to believe or, or want to think. I have no objections to people that want to gamble. That's, that's totally up to you. That's your decision. That's not my decision. But, but folks, the fact is, is there was a compact signed by the Indian Nations, signed by the governor of Arizona, a deal put together by everybody. And I happen to have that compact right here, and I, and I dare ask my opponent if he's even bothered to read this. I'm sure you haven't. Because if you would read this, you would find in here very quickly that what they're trying to do is not legal. It's just not legal. They made a promise, they made an agreement with the citizens, with the other Indian nations, that there would be no more casinos. It's that simple. Uh, to take the idea of dropping a sovereign nation in the center of Glendale that's going to pay no tax revenues from the casino resort, that's going to take jobs from the surrounding businesses, uh, doesn't make any sense to me. Now, let me finish up with this, folks. If, in fact, the courts make the decision that it's coming to Glendale and there is no recourse and it's going to be here no matter what, then I'm going to do what I can to make certain Glendale gets the best deal possible. But until then, I do think that we honor a compact, an agreement that was signed by the governor. The TO Nation also signed this and the other Indian nations. Thank you. Since this is such an important question, Mr. Cruz, do, do you want to respond to um, anything about the compact or the downtown businesses? You bet. Um, I've spoken with, with those surrounding businesses, and they believe that it will bring an influx of additional people to their businesses. Um, it, the court system is saying right now that they approve that casino. They've won case after case. And the city of Glendale is spending millions of your taxpayer dollars fighting something that's going to win anyway. And it's going to be there. The government says it has a right to be there. It's not Glendale property. Uh, we should, you know, if Glendale wanted that property, we should have annexed it at a time before the, the, the nation got into that. But it's just going to be such a huge economic boost to that particular area. There is no downside. Mr. Wise, do you want to respond to the point about money for the lawsuits? Or, or anything else you wanted to say on that? Thank you. I do want to respond. Uh, I, I did ask the question, Mr. Cruz. Have you read this? No, I have not read the okay. compact. OK, thank you. The candidates are unable because of the sound system to have their mics on at the same time. Um, it, they just don't work together, so there, there is a problem sometimes okay. with can, that. Can Be I finish patient. my 30 seconds now? Yes, you can finish your 30 okay, seconds. Okay, thank you. And, and again, folks, you know, I'm not making this stuff up. It's written here. It was an agreement made, signed by the, all the Indian nations in the state of Arizona. And Mr. Cruz, I'm sure, has spoken with people that like the casino. I've spoken with people that don't businesses. I was just at a, a business yesterday, very, very close to where it's going to be built. And he, his biggest concern is, that in fact, if that opens, it, it will close his doors. He came in six years ago. Uh, they've been hanging on by their toenails trying to keep their business open, and he's very, very concerned. So I think we can both agree that we're never going to agree on this. But the fact is, if, in fact, it comes, it's going to be here, and we'll do the best we can. Thank you. I'm going to go on to the next question. <clears throat> and again, we've had this from several people um, stated in different ways. And this question goes first to Mr. Wires. How do you plan on taking the city out of its financial deficit? Um, you know, is there an alternative to city worker layoffs? How do you see reinstatement of those already let go? And, and basically, people want to know, what is your plan for the economic recovery of Glendale? Well, thank you. And, and uh, something that... Um, Obviously, nobody, nobody had any idea what was going to happen with this economy, with this recession, and, and dare and I say almost the depression, uh, that we've all lived through the last several years, and we've all been hurt by it in, in, in many different ways. Uh, the very first thing that has to happen, and, and, and I think Mr. Cruz and I both agree on this one, one thing, and, and more than one, uh, that we need accountability. And one of the very first things that I'm going to propose is a zero-based budget. Now, I've got experience 
with working with large corporations, with working with millions of dollars. The state of Arizona, I've been on the Appropriations Committee for, for four years. Zero-based budget is something that immediately, immediately requires the city to have to come out and tell us line by line, staple by staple, paper clip by paper clip, what they need, why they need it, and this idea of taking every year and saying we had it last year, so we need it this year, the following year, well, we had it last year, but cost of living's gone up, so we need a few more. That doesn't make any sense. The city of Surprise has taken it on. It's very painful, but the mayor assures me that they're already re, uh, getting dividends because of that. And the city of Phoenix is working towards that. It makes sense. It's like something that any business, large business, would do. And there's no reason why the city of Glendale shouldn't be doing that. I ran out of time. <clears throat> Zero-based budgeting is fine. Um, but that's not gonna that's not gonna solve the problem. What's gonna solve the problem is stabilizing Glendale. And, and how you do that, <clears throat> in my six-point plan, we talk about um, keeping the emergency uh, revenue in place that was passed uh, back in June. That's that's the no on 457. What that'll do is keep the folks in place so they don't lose their 250 jobs, it keeps the level of service that you've come to depend on. Um, that's a five-year deal that I want to sunset, is, is absolutely the first, what I'm working on now is actually sunsetting that, should, should that be the case, but the, American, but the uh, Glendale voters are going to decide on that. Um, I sat down already with a company that renegotiates municipal bonds, and I asked them to take a look at the bonds that Glendale have out there and how we can tangibly reduce those. And they came back to me with the fact that we can renegotiate those bonds uh, to the tune of $42 million less. So I'm out there physically, or, or physically looking at what we can actually accomplish. Uh, $20 million, nearly $20 million in our first four years. Uh, that on top of my efficiency plan, that on top of stopping the uh, fight with the casino and, and saving that money will help um, bring us, stabilize us so we can move Glendale forward. Thank you. Do you want to respond to, to the bonds or anything sure. else? That and uh, folks, the, the thing that makes these debates hard for everybody is the fact we don't have time to truly explain what needs to happen in, in a way that makes sense to you. And so we're trying to cram a lot of information into a short sense. It's very difficult to do. Uh, there's tons of things have to, but you have to start again with the zero-based budget. Uh, if the tax actually passes, which means it goes away, uh, there's another problem that's going to have to be dealt with. If, if the voters say, you know what, we want that tax to stay, that still doesn't create or, or solve the problems. We have to look at everything. We have to go department by department. We have to, we have to quit doing things status quo the way they've been done in the past, and just increasing taxes and hoping that the problem goes away doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, you have to go everything. I, you know, uh, not too long ago I had offered a suggestion about sending out uh, our water bills with advertisements on it. Just yesterday, Channel, or I'm sorry, Gilbert started doing that. Other cities are already doing the things that this city should have already been doing. Would you like to respond to that? Well, that's zero but based budgets is fine, but again, you need a plan to be able to stabilize our finances. Folks, I didn't get us into this financial problem, and I, and I didn't contribute it to it. My opponent, however, did with the uh, reduction of state shared revenue to the tune of $16 million over the last four years. So what I'm trying to do is recover that money by bringing some sensible plan to the table so that we can stabilize and, and move forward. The next question is going to you, Mr. Cruz, first, and that is, will you be transparent with using taxpayer money? And while that's an easy yes kind of question, I think I'd like to hear a little bit more in detail. There we go. Um, yes, I plan on being transparent across the board. I want our citizens to know where their money's going, what we're doing with it, what's happening at City Hall. And that starts out with uh, an independent audit so that we can see where our money went and where we have to make changes so that we can be more efficient with what we're doing. Um, that 
closed door sessions, we have to, way too many of those. Uh, the, the executive sessions, um, the, there's a small percentage that need to be done because of uh, different issues with, with personnel and so forth, but we, we, we've used that as a crutch. We need to let the folks know exactly what's going on. Um, I intend to have a, web, uh, a, a mailer go out every week from the desk of the mayors that shows exactly what's going on at City Hall and what's coming up so that folks can give us their input um, and their opinion on the way that we are running City Hall. So yes, absolutely on the, uh, on the finances, but overall as a whole. question was, will I be transparent? With using taxpayer With using money? Taxpayer. And Absolutely. In fact, uh, the, the one thing that my opponent wants to continually keep trying to beat me up on is the state of Arizona was in a budget crisis, and I know everyone in this room remembers that. We had to make some decisions that were very uncomfortable. Now, I was wearing a hat of a state legislature, legislator, and my number one focus was to the state of Arizona and to District 12. Keeping in mind that I was representing District 12, the state of Arizona, not one city. Uh, we made decisions that was best for the state of Arizona, which I knew at the time some of the decisions that we made across the board were going to hurt multiple people in different ways. The intention was never, was never there to hurt anybody, but like Mr. Cruz said, we didn't make this problem, folks. The problem came to us through a recession, almost a depression. Although, one of the things I can tell you is Mr. Cruz uh, wants to keep saying that I'm the one making this partisan. He's the vice chairman of the Democratic Party right now as we're speaking. Mr. Cruz, being the vice chairman of the, of the Democratic Party, his leader, Janet Napolitano, was the one that refused to make the budget cuts that we needed to make at the time we needed to make them, which forced the state of Arizona into a worse crisis, which has now rolled downhill where the city of Glendale is where it is. Now, the council members have made some bad decisions. I'm not trying to defend them. But quit pointing fingers at other people. What do we got to do right now to start fixing the problems today? I can't fix what happened yesterday. That's water under the bridge. Neither can Mr. Cruz. But we can start working to fix the problems of Glendale today to make a better future. I suspect you may like to uh, respond to that. Well, I'm not impressed with uh, Mr. Wire's political sound bites. Um, he is the, he's the one that's out there making making those notions, but let's get beyond that because we, you're here to, to, to listen about how we're going to fix Glendale, and that's what's important. Um, as far as his voting record is concerned, you've just got to, you've just got to look at it. But there's, there, there's things that he could have done that he didn't do, uh, but I'm not going to go into that list right now. It's about the solutions. It's about solutions on moving Glendale forward. It's about how we're going to get out of this financial crisis. It's about how we're going to be able to bring new jobs to our city and keep the level of service that the city of Glendale has now. And I think that's what's the most important um, in, in the mayor that you choose. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next question, and that goes to Mr. Wires first. What do you do now, or how will you support the veterans' organizations in this area? Repeat it. What do you do now to support it, to support them, or how will you support the veterans' organizations in this area? I love that question. Uh, most of you may or may not know, uh, I know the American Legion Hall here knows because they were one of the people that voted for me for the Copper Shield Award representing all of our veterans in the state of Arizona. I've been extremely active uh, for the last eight years, actually much longer than that. I currently hold the rank of Major in Civil Air Patrol, which is the U.S. Air Force Auxiliary, working with the, the kids to make sure that uh, we take kids that are decent kids, keep them off the street, encourage them for aerospace education, for leadership, which makes better citizens out of them. Uh, I uh, have been on the Military Sustainability Task Force representing Arizona for the last four years, traveling all over the United States. I've been to Bethesda, I've been to the Pentagon, been all over, uh, making certain that when our veterans are gone, that their families are taken care of, uh, making certain when they come home that we do the very best we can to ensure I have uh, actually worked on several projects, uh, actually arranged and helped get a, a brand new home to a, a disabled veteran in Buckeye. Uh, no, one, no one in the legislature, and definitely not my opponent, 
uh, is going to come close to doing anything that I've done as far as representing our veterans, making certain that we look after them. The people that are out fighting for our country, they're laying their lives down for us, deserve when they come home to be treated like heroes and honored, and I certainly have always made that uh, first class effort on my part. Thank you. Mr. Cruz. Thank you. Great question. Um, yes, I also work with, uh, as a volunteer for some of our veteran services. I go down to the uh, VA retirement place uh, there on 3rd in, in Indian School, um, which my great-grandfather um, is at. We, we just, we'll, we'll be celebrating his 94th birthday this year. He is the recipient of two Purple Hearts, the Congressional Medal of Freedom for saving the lives of his men at the Battle of the Bulge. Um, my daughter, who's sitting with us today, uh, is a Navy vet herself, and so is her husband. So uh, the, the veteran services, um, the folks that are out there in the military that are working hard to keep us safe, I have the utmost respect for. Um, my family's in it, uh, and I will continue to be uh, a strong advocate for veteran services as well. Thank you. The next two questions, each one is directed to one of the candidates. I am going to let both of them respond to each, however. Um, but the first one goes to Mr. Cruz. Um, and it says, why is the UCFW interested in getting you elected mayor? Well, it's a union, the UFCW, if you don't know uh, who that is. They're the United Food and Commercial Workers. They're the folks at Fry's, they're the folks at Safeway, um, that bag your groceries and um, cash you out. Uh, they have an interest in Glendale because they do have employees that live in Glendale and work in Glendale. Um, my opponent is, is supported by two unions, the fire and police. Um, the city of Glendale has a closed door policy on unions now. We're not saying bring in unions, we're saying everyone has a chance. Whether it's the guy that owns his own electrical shop or Ted, as long as everyone has a shot and everything's on the table, that's the, one of the ways that you work to make sure that Glendale succeeds. Thank you. A short rebuttal if you'd like to comment on it. <clears throat> would I? I absolutely would. Uh, you know, the UF, UCFW uh, is, is not only the, the only union. Uh, I, think, I think there's 15 or 16 that he's showing up, I believe. And I might be wrong. It might be 13 or 14. I don't know. But uh, there's lots and lots of unions that show supporting Mr. Cruz. And, and he's correct, the police and fire union did endorse my campaign. Now, Mr. Cruz has got these little signs that say something to the effect of, Manny Cruz supports public safety. And, and I'm sure he does, I'm sure he does. The difference is, is police and fire support Jerry Wires. And I think that's something that most you folks should look at. And they look at that, and the reason they did that is because of my support, because of my history, and the things that I've done as a state legislator protecting those people that serve our, our, our citizens. Okay, thank you. The next question is directed to you first, Mr. Wires, <laughs> and it dovetails on, on what both candidates have just been talking about. Why have the fire and police endorsed you when you oppose um, Prop 457? <clears throat> Great question, um, and I'll just, just continue on where I was before. Uh, we don't have enough time to go through the whole story, so I'll try to go very briefly. A couple of years ago, there was a big push within the Republican Party, uh, mostly uh, a gentleman that ran for Congress, Speaker Adams, and his idea was to try to change uh, retirements for public uh, folks, or police and fire. And uh, I am being rules chairman, uh, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm the gatekeeper, I'm the guy that decides whether bill goes through or doesn't go through. And I told the Speaker of the House, <clears throat> excuse me, that I was not going to allow his bill, the Speaker's bill, to go through. And uh, in sort of a, a mumbling way, I was pretty much told that if it didn't go through, I was going to lose my chairmanship. Um, understanding politics, there's politics within politics. I didn't want to lose my chairmanship. And so I told him what I was going to do is allow it in, in committee, but I would be a no vote against it. And the reason I was a no vote is because it's unconstitutional. It was against the law. It's getting involved in people's contracts that we have no business being in. 
Okay, that passed in committee because nobody wanted to go against the speaker. I went against my own party, and it wasn't a popular thing to do within the speaker. Uh, it went to the floor, and eventually it ended up passing. I was still a no vote along with four other people in my party and the majority of the Democrats. I'm very bipartisan, folks. I'm going to do what's constitutional. I'm going to do what's right. And that's been, you can look at my record, I've always been that way. On the other side of that, just a few months ago, the courts have decided that what was unconstitutional and ruled okay. against that bill Thank in my you. favor. Thank you very much. Mr. Cruz? Yeah, so he voted on one of their issues, and that's why they, they support him. I understand that. But they're not very supportive of the actions of, of not voting no on 457 at this point, because what you're doing with public safety is, is potentially putting 106 police officers out on the street. That makes, that makes it crime go up, that makes it harder on businesses, on families, on the folks that actually still have to be there. Um, right now, investigators at, at 50 case loads apiece or more. Uh, crime is increasing, we need to hold that line. Uh, as, far as, uh, as far as me supporting public safety, absolutely, 100%. My campaign manager is a retired police officer from Peoria of 23 years. So that tells you that public safety is a huge part of Glendale, and we need to make sure that we have those folks out there keeping us safe. Thank you. Here's another question that kind of dovetails on what we've just been talking about. How can we pay, and it's going to Mr. Cruz first, how can we pay for police and fire protection if we don't raise taxes? Paying them minimum wage seems like a losing proposition. And um, obviously that person has a slant to it, but please tell us if you agree or don't agree with that and what you would do instead. You want to well, hear it again? Yeah, when I pay the minimum <laughs> Sorry. wage, I absolutely. How can we pay for police and fire protection if we don't raise taxes? Paying the minimum wage seems like a losing proposition. Well, I, I personally don't want to raise anyone's taxes. Um, I think that if, if there's an initiative out there that, that puts any future sales tax increase to a vote, I'll sign it. Um, but what's in there now is important to the folks that are there now. Um, we've got to make sure that we maintain that level, level of safety for our entire city. So how do we make sure that the citizens don't have to continually uh, get sales tax increases? We put a plan, like my six-point plan together, and we, and we save money. We, we save money on efficiencies. We save money on things like renegotiating our debt. We bring in new jobs and we bring in new revenues. Right now, our, uh, the, the housing market is starting to increase. So we're gonna start seeing more home buyers here. We need to make sure that those folks are safe. Uh, uh, Luke Air Force Base right now is expanding with their F-35 project. So economic development is coming. And with that casino, uh, it, it will come. So. The more revenue we make, uh, the, the easier it is for us not to be able to have to raise anyone's taxes and keep the level of service that the city of Glendale is accustomed to. Mr. Wires, can you answer that question and, and also say whether you agree with that and it, if it is possible to do this without raising taxes? We, we, I was listening to his, his answer. I need you to repeat it. Uh, sure. How can we pay for police and fire protection if we don't raise taxes? Paying the minimum wage seems like a losing proposition. Okay, well, first of all, they don't make minimum wage. They don't make anywhere near minimum wage. They, they actually make a, a fairly good salary based on what they do. They're similar to other cities in the state. Uh, and, and real quickly, I, wanna, I also want people to understand, uh, I, I reserve with Department of Public Safety every Sunday not here lately because this campaign's taken so much time. I put on a uniform and I take a cruiser out and I and I run up and down the freeways and the loops and uh, I deep I, you know I reserve a DPS. Uh, going back to how do we protect them without the taxes? Uh, it, it goes back to what I said earlier. We start off the zero base budget. We start looking at some of this low hanging fruit. Uh, I've already showed where we can protect a minimum of 15 police or fire or a combination of both by just two simple solutions. And my opponent says, well, you're not gonna fix the budget that way. No, you won't, but you have to start somewhere. It's not going back to a six point plan that he says that he has. When the city currently does four of those things, that's their plan already. 
It's not new stuff. He's rehashing, recycling the old stuff that the city currently does right now. Um, public safety is and always will be my number one priority. Under no circumstances will I allow public safety to be hurt. If in fact this tax does not pass uh, and, and it goes away, uh, if in fact we have to come back and add a very small portion just for public safety, I would be willing to look at that. Thank you. Would you like to say whether you believe that that's the status quo? that you're supporting the status quo by your plan? Supporting the status quo? Um, Mr. Wires suggested that. Yeah, he, he tells, yeah, he doesn't have a plan, so he's, uh, so he's grouping them on, on my plan, and, and he talks about, you know, they're, they're doing these things already. I sit on the Water and Sewer Task Force Commission, and Mr. Wires talked about uh, making ch uh, charging folks for uh, using their credit cards, putting an additional cost so that that $800,000 per year that we get, that, that we have to pay out on, on credit card costs, um, doesn't come from the city. Um, he, he, he's, that's part of his low hanging fruit that he's talking about. Folks, I, I sit on the Water and Sewer Task Force, we've been talking about that for months. Um, that's a decision that we're trying, to, that we either are going to recommend or not recommend to the city council. Uh, we don't want to cause, uh, make the, 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 our city residents pay more than they have to. So we're trying to come up with other ideas so that does not happen. Mr. Weiss, do you want to respond to that? I'm not, I'm not really sure which city council meeting that Mr. Cruz was in. I know he was in the same one I was. When the person came up and testified, the city of Glendale pays over $800,000 in credit card fees. I'm not making this up. This is what they said at the city council uh, workshop meeting. So I'm not sure where he's getting his information, but he needs to look somewhere else. Um, pretty much all I got to say on that one. Do you want to say where you're getting your information? Yeah, I'm getting my, I understand that we're paying $800,000 a year in credit card prices. The city, this water and sewer task force right now uh, is a huge, is the folks that actually take in the revenue. And that's, it's part of that. And that's what we've been talking about for months, whether or not we want to recommend that our citizens pay that extra fee. So that low hanging fruit that he's talking about, we've been talking about for months. Not at the city council meeting that he's been at, but at uh, meetings, the, the, the commission meetings that I sit at. Mr. Wires, 30 seconds. <laughs> Mr. Crew, you have to turn your microphone on. Uh, if they've been talking about it for months, why hasn't he done something about it? I mean, this is almost a million dollars a year, which is equivalent to 12 to 14 officers that were, were risking the chance of losing their jobs. And he just told everybody in this room that they're aware of it, they know it, they've been talking about it for months, and yet no action. I think that's what you should expect if he's mayor, no action. Same old, same old, same old. Well, Quick. Mr. Wires doesn't understand um, the, the recommendations can't come till the end of the year as far as is a formal recommendation to the city council. And that's what the Water and Sewer Task Force is. It's a, it's a year long discussion about what the city of Glendale is doing with their water and sewer, how it needs to improve, what recommendations we can give. So the process of recommendation is coming up. It's, it's in another month or two. So that's why it hasn't gone to the city council yet. Mr. Wires doesn't understand that because he's not a commissioner for the city of Glendale. Thank you. We're going to go on to the next question, and this goes to Mr. Wires first. Um, I guess this will be an opinion, but does the yes vote on the sales tax initiative 457 really eliminate the new sales tax or not? The Glendale City Attorney doesn't seem to think so. There have been conflicting opinions in the media. I asked that same question myself. I asked that same question of our city attorney. I asked the same question of multiple attorneys. And what I keep hearing is that this is gonna end up going to court. Whatever the decision is, it sounds like it's gonna end up going to court. Uh, as I look at it, my understanding is, eh, I don't think so. I think if the folks decide that uh, they want 457 to pass, I think it's gonna be starting from the time that it passes forward. I don't think it will go retroactive backwards. I'm not an attorney. I don't claim to be an attorney. I never have claimed to be an attorney. 
But I can tell you that when I talk with attorneys that have gone to school for many, many, many years, both attorneys are telling me two different things, uh, which they probably do that on purpose because I think that's how they get paid. Mr. Cruz. I, I've also uh, spoken with attorneys and I am getting conflicting answers on that. But from what I understand, it's the will of the people that retroacts that sales tax. It's the frustration that they have from the way the city council has conducted their business. Um, it's, it's the lack of transparency. It's the lack of uh, community involvement that the city of Glendale is starting, starting to do now um, that brought this about in the first place. They're frustrated. You raise our taxes, you, you do deals that we don't approve of, and now we're supposed to make that up. I understand that frustration. I think the city of Glendale's got themselves into a bind. And we've, we've got to see where we're at in January. It might fall into our laps at that point. It may not. But I think the intent is a retroactive. And how the city of Glendale decides to pre proceed, um, the current city of Glendale, uh, uh, the, the current council of Glendale, we'll, we'll actually see here in the next month. Thank you. Um, the next question goes to Mr. Cruz. What do you feel is the largest accomplishment you have ch achieved for the people of Glendale? The largest accomplishment that I've achieved? Well, raising a family in Glendale, I think, is at the top. My wife's here. Uh, and children, uh, they're going to school, they're going to the Glendale community, I think is, is my biggest accomplishment. Um, but I sit on two commissions for the city of Glendale, and I do a lot of work with our community organizations. So it's, it's just not, I think, a, a, a one-item issue. Um, I go to schools and I, I teach kids about the dangers of abandoned mines and how to stay safe because we had a, we had a young man from Glendale uh, ride his ATV in North, North Phoenix and fell into an abandoned mine and he passed away. Uh, that was Tyler Halverson, and that was just a few years ago. So it's important that we go out there and, and teach kids how to be safe and, and teach kids um, other aspects of safety. So what's my biggest accomplishment? Um, I'm gonna stick with my family, but I, I, I do a lot for the city of Glendale now and I, I will continue to do so. Thank you. Mr. Ryers. Again, another easy one. Um, I've been very involved with the city of Glendale for, for many, many years. Uh, uh, again, I think I said earlier that uh, I told someone that I hold the rank of major for Civil Air Patrol. I've been involved with Civil Air Patrol for uh, 16, 18 years now. Uh, the cadets out at Civil Air Patrol have been using the conference room upstairs in the airport hangar, and frequently they'd be pushed out because of the had other events going on. Uh, I started working diligently. It took me almost 12 years trying to work with the city of Glendale, trying to work with uh, Civil Air Patrol, and you talk about politics involved in that, it's crazy. But we finally got a building built. We had our groundbreaking, we had our ribbon cutting a little over a year ago. And just a few months ago, they actually called me back out and had a dedication in my name, Wires Educational Center. And, and I gotta tell you folks, that, that's really an honor. It's an incredible honor. Uh, I've been uh, very involved with food drives going back uh, right after Hurricane Katrina. Uh, uh, just across the street over City Hall. Uh, we raised almost a million pounds of food, both in money and cash. I've been very involved with Luke Air Force Base. My daughter and I both hold a record that uh, no one else can, can claim. My daughter landed a glider at Luke Air Force Base about uh, 10 years ago when she was 14 years old. Actually, it's been longer now. It's been more like 14 years ago. And uh, two years later, I actually uh, performed in the air show providing advertising with my airplane with the aerial banner at no charge to Luke Air Force Base. And as okay. far as uh, OHV you. legislation, I actually passed Thank a law for OHV Wires. legislation that requires children to wear helmets Thank while you. they ride. We have to go on. Okay. We are getting um, a little less time coming up, so I'm going to kind of combine a couple questions, um, and they might not seem to go together totally, but maybe you can take notes and make sure you answer all the parts. And this question goes to Mr. Wires first. Mesa is building a facility similar to Camelback Ranch at about 85 million. 
Why is Camelback Ranch costing us $195 million and giving us nothing in return? That's part A. Part B, will you continue to support a ballpark built in the city of Phoenix by Glendale? And also related to money, what is your position on how the city can save money? Do I get like 30 minutes to do Ah, I know, it's tough, huh? Uh, Mesa is building a ballpark, and it's legislation that was done, and the city of Mesa had done it as they thought about it. They didn't just do a slam dunk, just throw it together, the money's going to be there, don't worry about it type thing. They actually went in thinking about it. I actually had a, a meeting with Mayor Scott a little over a week ago, and we talked about that particular issue. And they have some issues that they're waiting to get money from Tourism Sports Authority, uh, as everybody is. Uh, you know, they're supposed to be getting money from them for the old stadium. In fact, they're trying to build a new stadium. So they risk the chance of not getting any money at all for that, and they're very concerned about it. As far as supporting Camelback Ranch, you know, it's a $200 million hammer that's going to just pound us in the head, and there is no solution, folks. There isn't any. The city of Glendale took property that was given to them to put a golf course to protect folks like me if I have to land my airplane out, a safe place to land on a golf course. They made the decision to put up this Camelback Ranch, a spring training, which is wonderful if the money's there. The money's not there. It's not there. We have no way to get money out of it because of the contract that was put together other than trying to make them sit down and try to get them to re renegotiate a deal that quite honestly they don't have to do. Again, it comes back to a contract, an agreement that was made. How do we force them to change that contract other than the kindness of their heart? And I don't remember the last one. Okay, we may come back to you. Mr. Cruz. Uh, yes, and the mayor of Mesa is Mayor Smith. Um, Kevilback Ranch is is a decision that was made with the current council. Mr. Wire says there's no solution. Well, I don't believe that. Uh, first of all, we can renegotiate those bonds down. And I've, I've got them right here. Uh, you can take a look at them if you want. Uh, the savings of uh, $42 million over the course of the note. We can try to work with our sister cities by bringing in, um, like I talked about, the brewers, uh, possibly bringing the brewers there. Um, in conjunction with the city of Phoenix, but I haven't sat down and, and had hard court discussions. But what I will do is I will work hard every day to come up with solutions so that we are just not left hang, hanging in the wind. I'm not going to give up on Camelback Ranch. I'm going to continue to look for solutions so that we can lessen the burden on our citizens. What was the, what was the next question? I forgot to. How can you save the city money? Uh, on that, renegotiating the bonds and trying to find partners to help um, to, to help partner. And you know, we, we can also do uh, a private and, and public partnerships as well. So it's it's about looking for solutions and not giving up. Thank you. You can have it. Yes. Obviously, the renegotiating the bonds is something that we would do no matter whether Mr. Cruz is there or myself or anybody else. That, that goes without saying, that's common business sense. You try to get the best deal you can and renegotiating bonds is one of the things you try to do, although if we don't fix the problems, if we don't get our house in order, our interest rates are gonna be higher, the bonds are gonna cost us more. Simple as that. And, and, and trying to bring the brewers into a stadium that has already signed a contract, why in the world would you even bring that up? There, we can't force them to change their contract. We, we can't make them do that. So to, to try to bring the Brewers into a stadium that already has two teams there with a contract already signed is something I think you're looking in the wrong direction. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next question, which certainly doesn't have as many parts, and that is describe your leadership style and what your priorities would be if you were mayor. And I got that from several different people, so I think it's an important question. And that goes to Mr. Cruz first. Thank you, great question. Um, style of leadership is to, is to be a strong leader that works with the city council. Um, to build relationships, to build consensus, and to do what's right for Glendale. Um, when I get in there, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at audits. We're gonna look at an independent audit to find out where our money went and find out where we can do better. Um, we're going to uh, 
find a city manager. We need to find the best and the brightest city manager and put out a, uh, put out a nationwide search. Um, Mr. Skeets, welcome to apply as well. But we need to find somebody that's going to work with the city, with the city council and with the mayor to be more transparent and open, to not run things the way they were run before, so that we can, so so, so that we can be, um, we we can be open to you and say, hey, this is what's going on. This is what we're hearing. We're not getting information at the last minute. We're we're in there working together for you, with you. Um, and then there's there's a implementing the six point plan. That's going to help the city of Glendale. Stopping the lawsuits on the casino, that's going to help the city of Glendale. Utilizing our foreign trade zones so that we can bring in other Honeywells and Intels. Working with our regional leaders that I have a working relationship with now, that's going to help the city of Glendale move forward. And that's the type of, type of leadership uh, that you can expect with me as mayor. Thank you. Mr. Ryers. Thank you. I, uh, I've got a history of leadership. I, I've been in the House of Representatives. I've chaired the Rules Committee, which is just about the most important committee in the House of Representatives. I was given that position because I showed leadership, because I am able to work with people. I've already told you folks tonight about uh, it doesn't make any difference whether it's my party or the other party. The fact is we have to do what's right. We have to represent the citizens. In my case, the representative was the state. Put on a different hat as mayor, we have to represent the, the people of our city. Um, I have something that my dad taught me. Uh, I lost my dad 11 years ago, but when he was alive, he used to tell me, Jerry, you were born with two ears and one mouth. And that's to listen twice as much as you talk. And I found that that works really, really well. You know, my dad wasn't the most educated man. In fact, he, uh, he barely graduated eighth grade. But I can tell you what, my dad was probably one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. Everybody has a story, everybody has an experience, and I find if you take the time to listen to people and, and communicate, you'll learn a lot. You'll learn a lot more by listening than you will ever by talking. Uh, again, I've got the experience, Mr. Cruz, as far as I know his experience is his own 501c3, which he made himself director of, and blowing things up, which I think would still be a pretty cool job. He was an explosives engineer, is my understanding. And, and quite honestly, I can't find a whole lot of other history on him, so I'm not sure about that, but that's my Thank type of experience. Thank you. Thank you. We have to go on, but I'll give you 30 seconds if you want to respond to having your name mentioned. Yes, and, and uh, I, I have been a, a safety director for a national company. Um, I've got management experience, but the, 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 the leadership that Mr. Wires is talking about in the legislature, um, I, I think is, is, is a, a whole, he's got a horrible record there. Um, he's cut uh, $50 million uh, to mortgage assistance for Glendale residents. Um, he cut the revenue sharing to 30% across the board, so it's, it's going to be difficult for him to work with regional leaders when they're all ticked off at him for putting them in a bad position. Thank but you. you do that with cuts to education, um, saying you. no on Katie's Law. I mean, there's a bunch of things. Thanks, Mr. Uh, Cruz. Um, 30 seconds, do you need to respond to that? Quickly. <laughs> Quickly. Time's up. Uh, again, <laughs> folks, uh, the House of Representatives, as a state legislator, you do things when sometimes people are going to be upset with you. The same case for the mayor of Glendale. There are going to be decisions that somebody will have to make that are not going to be popular with everybody. Simple as that. When you're a leadership, you have to stand up there and you have to say no to people sometimes. It's as simple as that. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes the question and answer portion of tonight's debate, but don't go anywhere. Before we go to the candidate's closing statement, let me remind you that they are going to stay around afterwards if you have any additional questions that you might still have. I know there were some asked that I didn't get to. Um, I also want to thank once again Channel 11 for providing televised coverage tonight um, and to the American Legion um, for the use of their hall and the Glendale Tea Party helpers, the League of Women Voter Volunteers, and most importantly, to our audience of Glendale voters who care about voting and realize that knowing counts. And now before closing statements from the candidates, but before we do that, this is finally the time to give a big round of applause to both candidates, please.
And as promised, closing statements will be heard in the order decided by a random hat draw. So we will begin with Mr. Cruz. Thank you. And thanks once again to the American Legion, uh, the League of Women Voters, and the, the Glendale uh, Tea Party Patriots for hosting this event, uh, this debate. Folks, I'm, I'm not a career politician. Um, I'm a guy with national business experience, experience in nonprofits, uh, experience with uh, local government, um, and I've got a solution and a plan to move Glendale forward. I've got a tangible plan. My opponent, on the other hand, has no plan to help the city of Glendale. I, I, I talk to residents and businesses every day. I understand that their families and their livelihoods are at stake. And I want to do nothing but keep the jobs that we have here in Glendale, build on those jobs. I want to strengthen our schools, and I want to make sure that our neighborhoods are safe and that our, our economy is better than it's ever been. We've got some great plans to move Glendale forward, and with your help, with your vote, you'll give me the chance to serve you and do just that. Uh, and, and as I've said many times, the role of mayor is not about me. It's about serving you. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Mr. Cruz and Mr. Wires. Well, thank you to everyone who's been part of putting this evening together and to everyone that took the time to be here tonight. Uh, you're making the decision that's gonna have profound implications for the future of Glendale, and in fact, for our very economic survival. As such, it's very important that we consider what the two candidates actually have to offer. Manny's a nice guy, as far as I can tell. He, he sent out some nasty mailers and he said some things that, that quite honestly are not true. But according to his campaign finance reports, uh, he's paying 10 or 11 consultants, so I guess maybe the blame needs to be on one of them, not necessarily Manny. Manny's background is in mining, and he really wants to be, wanted to be the state mine inspector, that's, and that's why he ran for the mine inspector two years ago. When he, la when he lost his race, he became the first vice chairman of the Arizona Democratic Party, and he started looking for his next political office that he wanted to run for. Now, Manny first decided that he wanted to run for city council, but when he found out that race was full up, he decided to run for the mayor. His business background is practically non-existent. He's named himself president or executive director of a nonprofit that's supposed to focus on closing abandoned mines. His number two man at that nonprofit is the same fellow who is his campaign manager, which is also the same fellow that happened to represent the unions. You know, it all seems very strange to me. My background's very different. I've started and operated my own businesses. I've served a community. I've worked very hard for local charities like food banks, the Shriners, Civil Air Patrol, and I've served you for eight years in the state legislature. While I was there, I was very active in promoting Luke Air Force Base and attracting the F-35, and I dealt with the budget crisis that was similar to Glendale has now, except substantially worse. With that, folks, uh, those of you watching at home, please visit my website, wiresformayor.com to get involved or to send any questions you may have. Thank you again for coming out and being part of this, and thank all of you, especially you and the Legion here, for having us. Thank you. Thank you. The League of Women Voters thanks both the candidates and the audience for a good debate and lots of good answers. We really do appreciate it. And I say good evening to everybody and walk or drive home safely this evening. Thank you. Thank you.